So in today's class, we'll be looking at the part two of the organic chemistry exam question solutions. All right. So starting from here, question 2A, don't forget you can always um, increase the, the video quality. All right. Go to your settings, increase the video quality so that you can see the questions clearer. That's if you can't see them clearly. OK. All right. 2AI says oxides of non-metals are dash. So what's the answer? The answer is that for oxides of non-metals, they are usually acidic. So the answer here is acidic. That's the answer. 2AII says the following body fluids are basic except, right? So the following body fluids are basic except, so except what exactly? Um, here's what you know. When it comes to, now if you look at the options, you can see pH, pH. So each of the fluid here have pH, right? And we remember, remember that pH scale is used to measure the concept of acidity and alkalinity. Right, what well, we have that the pH scale ranges from 0 to 14, and we know that anything less than 7 is actually considered to be acidic. Right, any pH, any pH less than 7 is acidic. Now, when the pH is 7 on the dot, it's actually neutral. That's neutral means it's not acidic and it's not basic. Right, meanwhile, whenever you have a pH that is greater than 7. It's said to be alkaline or basic, right? So let's say alkaline, right? Alkaline or it's said to be basic. All right, so you have this. So if they're asking you which of them is, um, what's that? What's the question again? Which of the following, the following fluids are basic except, now for it to be basic, it has to be, the pH has to be greater than 7. Right, so anything not greater than seven is either neutral or acidic. So the simple concept would be: look at the um, pH scale there. Which of them is lesser than seven? For for the first one here, the pH given is eight point four. The second one here is five point nine. The third option is seven point four. The last one is seven point two. All right, so the one lesser than seven is five point nine, which is urine. So we can say urine is actually acidic. Or we can say slightly acidic, all right? The answer is urine. All right, next one, the number three says, cis trans isomers are called geometric isomers. Okay, the next one here says, cis trans isomers, also called geometric isomers, result from dash about carbon-carbon bond. Result from what exactly? The answer here is, is it forced rotation? Is it enhanced rotation? Is it free rotation? Is it restricted rotation? Please, for this question, note that your answer is restricted rotation. That's your answer, right? So it's due to restricted rotation. All right, the next question here, number four, says the addition of H2, that's hydrogen atom, to an alkene is called what? Right? The answer here is hydrogenation, right? So hydrogenation is simply um, the addition of hydrogen atom to an alkene, which usually produces an alkane as your product. Next one here says an next one here says an eight carbon hydrocarbon with three pi bonds and one ring has molecular formula dash. A very tricky question, but I'll show you how we can get this. All right? Let's let me let's let me show you how we can get this. Now the first thing here to notice is that we said one ring right so let's get eight carbon in ring form so eight carbon in ring form what would it look like so we'd have something that looks like this um let's see this all right so if you look at this we now have eight carbon here let's start with uh let's say this so one two three four five six seven Eight. So we now have eight carbon atoms here in ring form. So that's the first thing you have to note there. All right, so the next thing here is that it contains three pi bonds. Now, what do we know about pi bonds? We know that we can get a pi bond from a double bond. A double bond contains one sigma and one pi bond. So for every double bond we create, we'll have one pi bond. So let's see how we can get a pi bond from here. That means if I create a double bond here, I have created one pi bond. 
okay uh let me draw this correctly so this is one pi bond let me create another one here this is another pi bond that's two where two three so i'll create a third one um perhaps here right so these three these three double bonds now give me a pi bond each so that means here i have one pi bond here i have one pi bond here i have one pi bond which is now three pi bonds and then eight um carbon right so from here the formula will be c8 because i have eight carbon here but then how many hydrogen will i have let me label this part as carbon let me label this part as one two three four five six seven eight which is eight carbon atoms now for the hydrogen observe that let's go to carbon one at carbon one i have um this as one two three right so the double bond that's one two and then three i need one more to make it four so i have one here so i have one hydrogen here to make it four if i go to carbon four, carbon two which is this one here now the concept is this every carbon needs four bonds for it to be stable right carbon two has three bonds one two and then three it needs one more that's one hydrogen here to make it four okay come to carbon three carbon three here also has three bonds that's this one here one the lower one two and the outer one three it needs one more hydrogen to make it four okay let's come to carbon four Carbon 4 again also has three bonds, one here, the lower one, inner, two, the outer one, and then this one here, three. So it needs one more to make it four. That's one more hydrogen. Look at carbon 5. Carbon 5 is a bit different. Carbon 5 has just two bonds, this one here, one, and then what? this one here, two. So it has just two bonds. It needs two more to make it four. So I'll add two hydrogen to make it four. Come to carbon 6. Carbon 6 has 1, 2, 3. Three bonds there. It needs one more hydrogen to make it 4. And then look at carbon 7. Carbon 7 here has 1, 2, 3. Three bonds. It needs one more hydrogen to make it 4. Then carbon 8. Carbon 8 here finally has just 1, 2. Two bonds. So I'll attach two hydrogen to make it 4. Now if I count the total number of hydrogen here, I have from carbon 1, I have 1. Carbon 2, I have an extra 1. That makes it 2. Carbon 3, I have an extra one. That makes it 3. Carbon 4, I have an extra one. That makes it 4. Carbon 5, I have 2. So 4 plus 2 plus 2 makes it what there? 6. Come to carbon 6, I have an extra one. That makes it 7. Come to carbon 7 and have an extra one. That makes it what there? 8. Come to carbon 8, I have an extra 2. So 8 plus 2 gives you what there? 10. So in essence, I have a total number of what there? 10 hydrogen. That makes it C8 h10 right cool. so let's look at which of them is c8 h10 that's this option here so the answer is c8 h10 that's your answer all right the b part here says give the structure of the following compounds cyclohexane right hex means it has what there six um six sides right okay so let's get the first one there cyclohexane number one there oh, is, it, is it b let's call it bi so bi let's get for cyclohexane cyclohexane most likely you you be um due to the space look at the space here most likely wants to use the um skeletal structure so cyclo means it's in the ring format hexane means it should have six sides right so a cyclic compound which is an alkane with six sides should look like this. So we have one, two, three, four. Now add just two more. Five and then six. All right. So this is a cyclic compound. It's an alkane. This is a cyclohexane. That's the answer. All right, BII says propyne. Let's get to BII. BII says propyne. Prop means three carbon. So that could be something that looks like um, this. Um, one, this. All right, so with this, I can see carbon one, carbon two, carbon three. That's it. 
So when we now say an ion, Y-N-E, that tells a triple bond. So that means here, you can come here and do this. This is correct. All right, so this is your propine. This is the answer. Now, mind you, there are different possible answers to this. I could still do it this way, this and this. And I still have carbon one, two, three, which is a probe. Then just to get the alkyne, I can still come here and do this. I'll put my first triple bond here. And then my second triple bond here. This is still correct. All right. Even in this first one here, this first one here, I can still come here and then I can choose to, um, the first one here, I can choose to, instead of putting it this way, that's on the right hand side, I can still move the triple bond this way to the left hand side like this. And this is still correct. All right. So the idea I'm trying to share is that there are different variations to this, which are still correct. Just be sure you know what you're doing. Okay. All right. The next compound there, um, transbutuene. Transbutuene. Um, B I I I. All right. So here we're giving trans boot to in. Now, this is under the geometric cis trans concept. The, the idea here will be very simple. Just come here. First thing you have to do is to create your carbon carbon double bond. That's to show you the alkene uh, in here. The next task is simple. For a trans system, note, note that the um, alkyl group that is attached will be at opposite ends. So put your hydrogen at opposite ends here. Then come here, I'll put this and then this. Now, to make this a boot, boot is for four carbon. Boot tells you that there are four carbon here. So I will come here and put this C and then C. If I do this, observe that if I do my numbering, all right, starting from here, from this side here, one, two, carbon two bears the double bond. Then from here, one, two, carbon two bears double bond. And that's why you have a two in. At this point, I will just complete the structure. So you can say H3C, then CH3. That's correct. So this is my structure for trans boot two in. All right, that's the concept. Next question here. Two two four trimethyl pentane. Two two four trimethyl pentane. All right, um, that's IV. So BIV. Two two four tri methyl um pentane all right so we're giving this compound here we have to draw the structure for 224 tri methyl pentane my first tax here would be simple let's get a pentane pent is five carbon um atom structure so i would go this um so i'll simply just do this this makes it um Okay, let me come down a bit. Come down a bit. Um, so my first tax, I'll just do this. Okay, so one, two, three, four. So I'm having one, two, three, four. One more. Five. So I'm having one, two, three, four, five. Okay, this five gives you your pent. And it's a single bond that makes it an alkane. So I have a pentane here. So if you have two, two, four, it means if I'm doing my numbering, let's say from left to right, I'm having one, two, three, four. So it means that at carbon two, which is this part here, I will add two methyl group. And at carbon four, this part here, I will add another methyl group. So let's add this, let's add them. Um, so at carbon two, you have this one going up here, this one coming down here. Okay, that's two two at carbon four. Here you have one going up here. That becomes two two four trimethyl pentane. All right, so this is how you get um, name this. All right, all right. So let me give you a task. Um, let me give you a task. So let me give you a compound. If you have a compound like this, like C double bonded to C, then you now have let's say H, and then let's say something like um. H H, you have this as C three H into 
7. What do you have here? Yes. C 5 H into 11. All right. Um, an interesting compound here. So if you have this compound here, what do you think would be the name of this compound? Leave your answer in the comment section. All right. So what I just did here is to provide the solution to um, the organic chemistry exam questions. All right. So for detailed organic chemistry lecture on all of the homologous series, alkene, alkene, alkanols, um, alkynes, and each of them, right, including their nomenclature, their reactions, their preparations, simply visit my website www.jonaimane.com forward slash courses and then look at look out for the organic chemistry course all right you get um detailed lecture on each of the homologous series i'll leave a video on how you can access it at the end of this video but before then if it's your first time all right or if you enjoyed this video please do well to like this video all right leave a comment so for the comments tell me the name of this compound so this compound here provide the name of this compound in the comment section also don't forget to subscribe if you're yet to subscribe or if it's your first time please do well to subscribe as it helps us to grow and of course hit the bell icon so that you get notified whenever we upload a new content finally don't forget to share this to your friends so that they can also learn all right thank you so much and see you in the part three of the organic chemistry exam solution videos